Hi, I'm Miriam Manzo. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about one of the most used rooms in the house, the family room. And I'm going to share with you the thought process and questions I ask when designing this room for my clients. But first, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for helping you design an online presence and help run your business. Let's go through the different components that make up the family room. And stay with me to the end. I'm going to share with you a floor plan that I'm working on for a new client. It's a very awkward space. And I wanna share with you how I um, tackle that space in order to make sure that the client's needs are met and leave them with a beautiful room at the end. So let's talk the first question you should be asking yourself. What is the function of the family room? Now, I know this kind of seems a little bit strange, but not everybody uses their family room in the same way. For some people, they do have a separate media room. Therefore, their family room is really more about conversation rather than TV watching. But in most houses, I would say the family room has to do a multitude of things. And the first and most important aspect of that family room is TV watching. So determining the function of the room is really the most important question you need to ask yourself in order to really understand how to look at the next items. The next thing once you've determined the function of that room is what is the focal point? Now, over the years, I've heard lots of talk about focal points to pick one and then have that be the key player in the room. The problem is not every room has a focal point, which sometimes makes it easier for you to design around the room because you can create your own focal point. And sometimes a room has too many focal points. For example, in my own family room, you can see behind me, the fireplace is a major focal point and it really has pride of place on this wall behind me, which is viewed from the kitchen area. But then I also have a beautiful window wall that overlooks the um, outdoor patio and the ravine, which because of the sheer size of it makes that window wall a huge focal point. But for me in a room um, that is being used for TV watching, the TV is what should be the focal point. So the number one mistake I see people making is to put their TV over the fireplace. So let's start with that. I personally do not like it. There have been very few instances where I will put a TV over the fireplace. And that really is because it is the only option that we have. If it's a more contemporary room where you're using a long linear fireplace, which can be placed closer to the ground, a TV over the fireplace isn't a bad idea. But in a situation like mine, where we've got a really high mantle, and remember my ceiling heights are almost 11 feet. So my mantle height was chosen to be in scale with my ceiling height. If I were to put that TV above there, it would be very uncomfortable for TV watching. When I'm doing my projects, the ultimate height to the center of the TV, regardless of the TV or the ceiling height, is 54 inches above finished floor. 54 inches gives you a viewing height that doesn't put strain on your neck. Now, one of the mistakes, again, people make is they take a look at that center point when they're standing, but we're never watching TV standing. So you have to remember that you want the center of the TV lower so that it's really at your sight line when you're sitting down. And for me, 54 is really that sweet spot. Now, the other mistake I see people making when uh, purchasing their TVs or designing for their TV is especially men, they wanna go big or go home. But there is a formula for determining the best size for your TV. The size of the TV should be multiplied by one and a half to two and a half times for the ultimate distance away. For example, if you're looking to buy a 55 inch TV, you would multiply that by one and a half 
to two and a half times to get the proper distance you should be sitting in order for the best viewing experience possible. So you can either decide on how far away your couch is and scale your TV to that, or if you have a larger room, then you can buy a larger TV and determine how far your couch should be from that. The other consideration is when placing your TV, you want to make sure that you have comfortable seating, preferably a sofa, directly across from the TV. When I see a room that has two sofas facing each other and not facing the TV, I always think this isn't the ideal way to t uh, watch TV. You're going to have to sit with your body contorted in order to view that TV. Now, if you're just watching for small spurts of time, that's fine. But if you're going to actually be using your family room as a media room and doing Netflix binges, you really want to make sure to have seating directly across. Now, what I've done in some houses where there really isn't a choice or they want a lot of seating, I do settees where the person has a high enough back on that arm that they can lean back, stretch their legs out, and then be able to view the TV. You have to take into consideration a few different items. The size of the TV, the location, and that optimum seating direction. Let's take a moment to talk about Squarespace and the product features we love most. First up is their blogging and commenting feature. We use this for our monthly newsletter where we discuss topics from past videos. You can use this feature as it has a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Mailing lists. Get the right message to the right people. Collect email addresses through your website and send subscribers the information they care about most with their unique mailing list feature. And finally, for online stores. Sell your products, whether physical or digital. Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Click the link in the description below for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by using code Miriam Manzo. We love Squarespace. It's made such a huge difference in our business. I know you'll love it too. If the family room is the most used room in the house, then the sofa has got to be one of the most used pieces of furniture in your home. Choose wisely. Again, here's a mistake I see a lot of people making. They don't properly scale their sofas to the room. Either they have something that they don't really love, but they want to reuse it because they don't want to uh, have to replace it right now, or um, they just figure I have it, so why not use it? This is a piece of furniture you are going to sit on every single day for possibly hours. Spend the most amount of your budget on your sofa. You can always fill in with accessories or toss pillows or that sort of thing later on. Make sure you invest in a properly sized sofa and one that is of really good quality construction. I urge you to find a local couch uh, or sofa maker in your area and go in and familiarize yourself with the different seating options available. Price is going to dictate where you, whether you're going to be able to do a foam seat or a down filled seat, but you want to know the difference in how it sits in order to best make your decision. Now, once you've got your sofa placed and hopefully some chairs around it, we want to talk next about lighting. Your family room should have a multitude of lighting. Both overhead and ambient lighting are equally important. You want to make sure that wherever your couch and seating areas are, that you're able to have lamps, um, next to it so that you don't have to have those overheads on when you're just sitting watching TV or reading a book. And I love the use of um, art lights in a family room. It gives an ambient light that really doesn't distract from the TV while still giving you a little bit of light to help prevent eye strain. 
carpet size is another big consideration in your family room. Go as large as you possibly can so that all the furniture sits on it. But the other reason you wanna go as large as possible is that will visually expand the size of the room. A too small carpet will make your room feel and look smaller. We have a video that I'll leave the link to that just discusses carpet sizing and how to scale it to your room. The other consideration is tables. I like to keep it about 18 to 20 inches away from any seating. So for example, if you have a sectional couch, you want to make sure there's 18 to 20 inches of space to walk around between the couch and the table. In terms of the height of your coffee table, it really depends on how you use your coffee table. If your space is more contemporary, you'll notice that there are a lot of coffee tables that are only 14 inches in height. These are really meant to go with the more contemporary sofas that are also lower to the ground than standard. If you wanna put your feet up, you're gonna want that coffee table to be approximately the same height as your sofa, which generally is 18 inches from the floor to the the top of the seat. And then if you know your family likes to play games or eat at the coffee table, you can go with what's called a cocktail height table, which is about 21 inches high. The final consideration for the family room is display and storage. Does the budget allow for a built-in to house the TV as well as some closed storage? Or are you going to do a console beneath the TV and then some separate display areas? Again, budget will dictate this as well as what's left in your floor space after the other items that you've considered. Now, let's take a look at this floor plan that I'm working on and I'll show you how I bring all of these items together when planning this space on paper. Let's take a look at this family room for a new project that we're working on. Now the room is very awkward. It is over 20 feet long by 12 feet deep. And there are a lot of issues here. One of them is that the floor is sunken. It's a step down. It has a screen door to the backyard or a sliding door with this very awkwardly placed window. It has another exit to the hallway, which takes you to the powder room. And then it has this wood burning fireplace which is not centered. Now here on this opening or this step down there is also a railing that comes halfway um, that I now need to determine do I want to keep that railing am I going to raise the floor. So I've decided in this case not to raise the floor. It's going to a not really give me any benefit and it's also going to complicate the um, exit out. We do not have the budget nor do we want to replace this sliding door. I've also determined that I'm not going to bother moving this wood burning fireplace. We are going to replace it with gas but I there, see no benefit in me bringing it to the center of the room as opposed to being off to the side and if anything it's going to help me with my furniture placement. What I am going to do though is get rid of this railing and put a half wall instead. This allows the view between the kitchen and the family room to stay intact while giving me a little bit of um, concealment of the back of my sofa. So if I take you to one of my floor plans that I've done, this here is the budget friendly version of what I would do. So I've determined that the best place uh, for the couch is in this corner. There's my little half wall. There's my step down from the kitchen. What I am going to do is I'm going to use a heavy linen shear to completely block out this patio door and window. Um, the reason I want to do a shear, a heavy shear, is I still want the light to come into the room, but I want to block out the fact that we've got a door here. Now, the reason I can block this door is from the kitchen. I have another um, door to the outside here, and I'm going to repeat the use of a heavy shear here in the kitchen so that you have that cohesiveness, cohesiveness between the two rooms. Now, here I've got a console. Again, we said this was budget friendly with a TV above it. 
And then I've done a freestanding bookcase over on this side with a swivel chair with an ottoman. So this will give the homeowner's wife um, the little quiet reading nook that she desired while giving seating for the entire family as well as extended family um, a great view to the TV. Now, if I look at the second version of the plan I've done for them, this is a little bit more expensive as we've now taken a built-in that goes right across this whole wall. In this scenario, I would replace the wood-burning fire with a gas fireplace, but have it sit a little bit higher so that I have some storage underneath it. And then I would put this little storage um, cabinet underneath the window as a place to put a light so that when the um, wife or someone is sitting here uh, in the reading nook area, they have this little light um, fixture beside them. This would now be a book case that would be built in so that this is all a cohesive wood and color. And then our TV could be built in or it could be sitting on the wall and we could keep this built in lower rather than taking it to the ceiling. And then in this case, we have a swivel chair in the corner with two floating ottomans, one that could be used here with the swivel chair, the uh, other or both could be brought here to the um, lounge area or the TV viewing area when they have um, extra people. I hope you enjoyed this aspect of the video and if you want to see how I space plan the living room, dining room and the very large and awkward primary uh, bedroom of this house, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, let us know in the comments below how we're doing and what you'd like to see. Subscribe so that that really helps get our channel out there and ring the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Miriam Manzo.